Happy Thursday, everybody. A few people asked for a Magic Band 2.0 unboxing video, so that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna unbox this Magic Band 2.0. This is the limited release purple 2017 Magic Band. Let's have a look at it. Here's the packaging for the Magic Band 2.0. This is a limited release of the 2017 Magic Band for the year, like the new year one. I don't know what the little B on the back stands for. It does show me that there's two different sizes available, one for kids and one for adults. And just like the last time that we did an unboxing for the Magic Band, the inner color part can be separated from the black outer part to make it a smaller, more comfortable band for smaller wrists. But then here's where it gets interesting. If you have a look, the icon is removable. The icon's this large center thing here with the Mickey on it. But if you notice in the drawing and the description of the drawing, it says the icon is removable with the help of a small screwdriver under adult supervision, be sure not to over tighten the screws. So, you need a screwdriver, and it does not come with a screwdriver, in order to take the icon out. That's interesting. So this limited release 2017 Magic Band was $27.99, and then I got my annual pass holder discount, which is 20% right now due to the 45th anniversary, and that brought the price down to $22.39 before tax, $23.85 after tax. So let's open this thing up. There will be a small black piece of tape on the back of the Magic Band. That is just to cover up the number of the Magic Band because I have not activated this yet and I would like to activate it on my account and not have somebody activate it on the internet. So here we go. There it is. It's all opened up. Let's have a closer look at some of the details on it. Here I have the Magic Band 2.0 next to a Magic Band 1.0 so you can see a difference in size. The 2.0 is much bigger than the Magic Band 1.0. After undoing them, it looks like the Magic Band 2.0 and the 1.0 are the same length. So you don't gain any extra length between the Magic Band 2.0 and the 1.0. Here are some of the details of this Magic Band. There's a little Mickey down here, which is fun. I don't think the 1.0, oh, the 1.0 does have that. Um, it, it says Walt Disney World. It's got a little Sorcerer Mickey here. It looks like Tower of Terror, which is cool. 2017. Here's the icon that is removable. Walt Disney World with another Sorcerer Mickey and Cinderella Castle right there. I don't know what this little cloud looking thing is down here. Maybe that's another detail of the Mickey. I don't know. And then on the back it says limited release and then you can see the two screws to take the icon out. And it, like I said before, there's just a piece of black tape covering up the Magic Band number. Other than that, there's not much to it. So let's take the icon out and see how that looks. All right, I really had to search around, but I found a real tiny screwdriver that we can use to get these screws out. So let's take them out. Also, these screws are very tiny and seem like they would be very easy to lose. And there it is. That's the icon out of the Magic Band. So this little part right here is all that you need as far as your Magic Band goes. And you could put this in other bands or even in little keychain things that they sell. We still haven't found any of the little keychain things in the park anywhere. As soon as we find one, we will get one and put this little icon in it. So let's put it back together and see how it does. Also, side note, I don't think there is anything preventing me from putting it in upside down to where the Mickey is upside down, or even backwards. So the Mickey's on the inside, but I'm sure you want your Mickey facing out so that everybody can see it, and then they can tell you to put it Mickey to Mickey, and then this little bezel goes on. I wonder if there's a specific way the bezel has to go in. Ooh, maybe there is. Oh, it clips back into place, like it. you have to really push it. Oh, maybe not, it's not quite lining up correctly. This is actually very difficult to do. Okay, maybe it's upside down. Okay, this is just gonna be me struggling with the Magic Band for 15 minutes. I don't think that there's any specific way that it's supposed to go back in, as far as this little thing goes, but it doesn't seem to be going in very easily. Oh, and now it just went in, okay. So, you have to take your little tiny screws, put them back in the holes without losing them, and then, uh-oh. Why do I feel like you're doing like microscopic surgery? I don't know. I kind of am <laughs> and then put it screw it back in and it says make sure you don't over tighten them Why? So, 
Because you could strip it out and then it oh. might just fall out on its own. Gotcha. Alright, my fingers are too big for these screws. Alright. Last screw goes back in. Okay. It's all back together now. That was very difficult. And there it is. That was the Magic Band 2.0 and how to take the icon out and put it back in. Uh, that was a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. But, hey, we can move the icon around and put it in any band that we want as long as it accepts icons or into a keychain or maybe a necklace. I don't know. I think they're going to have a lot of different options for you to put your Magic Band icon into things. Just wanted to give you guys one more shot of the Magic Band next to the original Magic Band so you could see it on a wrist and see how much bigger it is. It's not too much bigger. It's not uncomfortable or anything like that. It feels just like you're wearing a watch. So I'm going to take this other Magic Band off and flex my wrist a little bit to see if it gets uncomfortable in any way. I mean, it's it kind of squishes all my wrist around when I do like that, but it's not too bad. Like if I were to push down on the ground like this. Yeah, it's not bad. It's definitely less intrusive than a watch, but it's more intrusive than the original Magic Band. Should be noted that both the Magic Band 1.0 and 2.0 are waterproof, so you can wear them in the pool at your resort, to the water parks at Disney, or if you get caught in the rain, because it does rain a lot here in Florida. If you're staying at a resort, your Magic Band will be your room key. You can charge stuff to your room using it. It holds your credits for your dining plan, any Disney tickets that you have, and it also holds your photos from the Disney PhotoPass photographers. If you have an annual pass, it's just your ticket and holds your photos from PhotoPass photographers. And there you have it. That is the unboxing of the Magic Band 2.0. Disney has already started sending out Magic Band 2.0s to hotel guests and annual pass holders that renew their annual pass or people that get new annual passes. There is a very limited quantity available for purchase at the park. So far, I've only found four different styles. Two that are 2017, like the one that I showed you today, and one that was a 45th anniversary band. I don't know if there are any of those available anymore because it was a limited quantity of 2,500. And then the last thing was a Star Wars Magic Band with the bad guy from Rogue One. I'm sorry, I don't know his name. All in all, the Magic Band 2.0 is pretty cool. I like that you can take the icon out and put it into different items or different bands or stuff like that. You can mix and match your colors of bands. Like if I had a green band and I wanted a blue icon, I could do that. But I don't like how big it is, and I don't like that this is sort of like a way for Disney just to get more money out of you because you buy the band or you get it with your hotel or your annual pass, and then if you don't want to have it on the band and you want to have it in like a carabiner or a keychain, you have to buy the keychain extra. I also don't like that they don't give you a little screwdriver with it because they could sell it for $30 for a Magic Band. They could include like a real little cheap screwdriver for you to be able to take the screws out and switch the icon out with whatever you want but they don't. I think they introduced a Magic Band 2.0 to kind of improve the signal strength of it because they were having a hard time with people being able to put it up against the Mickey to Mickey and it was like if they didn't get it just right, it wouldn't read it. I think this new Magic Band has a better antenna in it and a better battery system so that you don't have to go all the way up to Mickey to Mickey. It'll start reading once you get close to it, which is good and bad. Like for those of you guys that don't, want to feel like Disney is following you around the park, Magic Bands are definitely not for you because even though they say that they don't track your movement throughout the park, it's kind of hard for them not to. I've had the situation where I've been wearing my Magic Band, gone on to Seven Dwarves Mind Train, never tapped my Magic Band anywhere, and then magically my pictures and video from the ride show up in my PhotoPass folder. So that means that somewhere, something is reading my Magic Band. Also, some of the rides will have little things in the queue that are sort of personalized. Take for instance, Expedition Everest has posters that are like, Tim is going on an expedition to Mount Everest. And it's like a, a poster with your name on it. There definitely are things reading magic bands when people don't tap the magic bands. The only part of Disney where they claim that they are following you with the magic band is on the cruise line. They give the kids magic bands so that if a kid gets separated from their parents, they can pinpoint that kid anywhere on the cruise ship which is pretty neat, but a little bit big brotherish. So there you go. All in all, overall experience. I think I'm happy with the new Magic Band. I don't know. So with that being said, I am off and I will see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.